98-year-old Tao Porchon Lynch exemplifies her mantra, there is nothing you cannot do, and shows us what a lifetime of conscious yogic living looks like. Dr. Deepak Chopra said, Tao is a mentor to me, one of the most acclaimed yoga teachers of the country. She teaches us to have exquisite awareness in every moment. In this engaging session, be enthralled by Tao's journey on multiple continents as a World War II French resistance fighter, actress, model, producer, and entrepreneur, and hear her firsthand account on historical icons such as Sri Aurobindo, Mahatma Gandhi, Ernest Hemingway, Marlene Dietrich, and the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Learn her secrets to boundless vitality and watch her demonstrate her special energy techniques. This guided conversation and multimedia slideshow is moderated by internationally recognized thought leader and yoga teacher, Teresa K. Abba Kennedy, who is the co-author of Tao's award-winning autobiography, Dancing Light, the spiritual side of being through the eyes of a modern yoga master. Come with questions that only hindsight and living history can answer and walk away inspired to craft a fearless and fulfilled Tao-like life. And I just want to add in a couple of introductory comments about Dr. Kennedy. Always seeking to learn, Dr. Kennedy has multiple certifications in coaching, yoga, fitness, holistic health counseling, lifestyle and weight management, and a world-class education, Wellesley College, Harvard Business School, Harvard Kennedy School of Government, Yale University, Jackson Institute for Global Affairs, and Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy in Singapore. Author of four books, she contributes to various blogs, and her latest book obviously is Dancing Light, the Spiritual Side of Being Through the Eyes of a Modern Yoga Master. It's won multiple awards. And although she's American, she was born in Ghana, started school in Australia, and studied design in Italy. So Dr. Terry Kennedy is a powerhouse, a motivational speaker, a certified coach, and everything she does is about harnessing human potential. So please join me in welcoming Tao Lynch, Portion Lynch and Dr. Terry Kennedy. Thank you. <laughs> can you hear me? And, and let's test Tao. Can you say something for us, Tao? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. You have no idea how that matters to me. Thank you so much. So we are delighted to, to be here. And I'm delighted to be here again, you know, because I, I, I presented for the Yoga Research Society a number of years ago. Uh, and and now Tao uh, has has graced us with her her time and and her wisdom. Uh, and Tao and and I met about ten years ago, uh, and and we've been working together for now six years, uh, really sharing her wisdom and amplifying her light. And it's been a delight. Uh, and so you'll hear a little bit about her journey. And some of you may have seen her on America's Got Talent dancing <laughs> uh, last June uh, with her dancing partner who was 70 years younger than her. Uh, and, and she just did a competition of 30 dances uh, about a week ago and won multiple awards. So now you're up to 740-something awards. Uh, and she has graced the stage with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, uh, and, and he was amazed by her, and, and you heard you know, Deepak Chopra. In fact, last Sunday, uh, Deepak, well, last week, Deepak Chopra, uh, the head of his company, calls me and says, I'm, Deepak wants to talk to Tao right away. Uh, and so I said, okay, let's find Tao. Uh, and they did a Facebook Live talk together on Sunday. Uh, and, and it was amazing, inspiring people from around the world live uh, there, the two of them, the two lights. Uh, and, and so, and yes, now this has to be updated because two nights ago we found out the book has won 10 awards. Uh, it's won its 10th award, uh, and so people are now learning more and more about, about Tao's journey. And so, 
let's talk a little bit at Tao. Tao was born on a ship in the middle of the English Channel, so her life started off dramatically, uh, and, and then ended up in, in Pondicherry in India, and your uncle had such an influence on your life. So talk a little bit about Vital Porchan, your uncle. I, I guess I was in a hurry to get here because uh, I was born on the ship. And my mother died at birth at seven, um, how do you call it, 700 hours? Seven, seven months. Seven, yes. Sometimes my English is not always so good. Um, but now I'm getting to the point where it's the other way around. I'm my, uh, so I'm uh, trying to find my words in, in different languages to make sure that you understand me. I want to thank you all for coming. I'm very touched, really am. Thank you. So your uncle used to, he, he downloaded, if you will, in our current language, all of this philosophy yes. in, to you as a girl. He was known all over for designing uh, railways. Uh, so when I was young, he took me to uh, Masawa in uh, South Africa and made the railroad up to uh, Yanam in uh, China. And uh, so I got around a little bit when I, when I was young. I was brought up there and uh, uh, in Pondicherry until I was 19. And uh, then I, the walk started, and uh, I decided that maybe I should go back, go to France, and perhaps meet my, my father. Now I'm going to stop you. So I have permission to interrupt Tao. Yes. <laughs> oh, and so I'm going to stop you there for context. Uh, and, and a few other you know, stories. So, you know, Pondicherry is a French colony uh, in, in India. Uh, at the time, and, and, and so your uncle was a student of Swami Vivekananda, uh, and, and, so, and he knew many people, Sri Aurobindo, you used to walk on the beach with Sri Aurobindo, uh, and this little man with glasses, so talk a little bit about the little man with glasses. I walked into my room one day at my house, and I saw this sweet little man sitting on the floor, and everybody touching his toes. And I couldn't figure out what it, what it was all about. But three weeks later, my uncle told me I wanted to pack a case. No fancy clothes, just some extra underwear and tops. I'm taking on a long trip. And don't say very much to your aunt because she doesn't want to, me to take you there. Um, I was three weeks later, I was meeting with Gandhi and I marched with Gandhi. And uh, I really wasn't frightened because we had a, a French flag and even though there was a lot of blood flowing and everything, I wasn't really scared. And I was feeling proud that I could be with people and, and tune in to a oneness. Uh, so it sounds very crazy. But uh, I went again when I was 19 and there I met a lot of wonderful people. Somebody from this country called Dr. Wealthy Fisher, who started uh, uh, world education. And uh, she was one of the people. Uh, Dr. Deshmukh from Hyderabad was illiterate at 19. At 26, she was minister of finance because Gandhi said that men had great visions but it was the women who put them into a play. And so uh, I met a lot of people, Indra Devi, that as I kept meeting Indra all over the world. We, I went to uh, Israel, Yoga for Peace, 400 of us, and she was there too. She saw me in, in, when I was in MGM, and she said, what are you doing here? Why are you not teaching yoga? And I said, well, I don't think I'm good enough. She said, nonsense. You make films, you teach yoga. So I was in the film with uh, 
showboat, which actually didn't materialize too much because they cut out the scene, which was all in French. And uh, so all you saw me at the, after five months going like this uh, in it. But I, I did teach Catherine Grayson and uh, uh, Debbie Reynolds uh, yoga. They wanted me to start. So I, I did. And that's how I, I got back into going, meeting Iyengar, and getting him to take women. Wait, I'm going to stop you there, because there's much more right before that. And so I want to go back to the beaches of Pontchartrain. How you discovered yoga? How did you discover yoga 90 um, years ago? Yes, 90 years ago. <laughs> I, I was on the beach. And uh, I saw a lot of little boys. I was eight years old. And I thought it was a new game. So I went home really happy about it. And my aunt said to me, oh, no, that was yoga. It's not ladylike. I said, well, if boys can do it, I can do it. And so I continued to do yoga from the time I was eight. Not so good, but I did my version of it. So, so think about that, 90 years of yoga. Uh, and with the backdrop of Swami Vivekananda, the, the, the Tao Prashant, Tao's uncle, uh, Tao said is really was the, probably the greatest influence on her life. And, and growing up would give the philosophy, like don't put too much on your plate. Don't kill. So what we might know of our yamas and niyamas and, and, and the eight limbs, Tao received simply by being there with her uncle uh, and the influence of Swami Vivekananda and Sri Aurobindo. You used to walk on the beach with your uncle in Sri Aurobindo. Imagine that and talk about the Vedas. Uh, and, and so we fast forward. So you have you know, Gandhiji, and, and we were just at the UN two days ago and did a program, and did a program in June for International Day of Yoga also at the United Nations. And Tao is, is probably the only person left on the planet who marched both with Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King. So that, to me, is mind-blowing. <laughs> when you believe in something, go and do it. If you, you can talk all you like, but it's in the action that makes you a little better person because we can give to other people and we get something in return. We get the beauty of a smile, and that's, I think, very important. <laughs> and your smile lights up every, everything. And so let's fast forward a little bit to 1939. What is happening? The war was breaking out, and the Germans had uh, invaded Poland. And I thought I would like to uh, go to... Uh, back to France and maybe do something in France and um, where my father and um, my uncle, although they were both born in India, uh, my, their uh, sister was in south of, south of France where she had a vineyard. And um, so I decided that I would go and see if I could find my, um, my father who was with the French Canadians. Um, and the war started off, and I got involved with the war. Now, can I stop you just for one moment? So this is a ship Tao took from India um, to Europe, uh, is the actual ship. Uh, and it was the last passenger ride. Uh, and, and then it became a troop ship uh, and was torpedoed the, the next year. Uh, and, and, and Tao's recall of even just the ship and the deck and, and, and all, and you can see it in her book, was so precise, uh, it's incredible. So you take this ship, you're in Europe, you're trying to find your father, and you're there with your aunt. Well, uh, my uh, aunt started doing things for uh, the peer, a lot of the Jewish people coming down, escaping from Poland, had no food, nothing, and they were dragging little children and everything. So she started giving work to them. And when the Germans started coming in, she decided an, on a different a way of helping them escape. And that was, she emptied her uh, uh, place where she aged 
wine and put the wine in big cardboards uh, with a tap on the outside. And when the Germans came, she'd say, would you like a glass of wine? They didn't know she was hiding a dozen people behind the walls. So she got into that and uh, stayed with it until they discovered what she was doing. And then she escaped over, taking me with her because I was still wearing saris. And, she, and the Germans were looking at me weird. So she went to Biarritz, which is on the other side, on the Atlantic. And there she saw where they were patrolling the uh, frontier between Spain. And uh, so how was she going to help people escape into Spain? Because they had these dogs with them. So she went to the Germans and she said to them, you know, um, I don't want to be paid, but you know, if you like, I can um, take care of them every night for you, and just a few uh, coupons for food. What she meant was that she was going to get the dogs to meet the people she was hiding so they wouldn't attack them afterwards when they were trying to cross over. And uh, so she actually helped people still escape and then she said, now it's your turn. Now it's for you to help. So I went up to, to Paris, and I started helping people in the underground of Paris. There were so many people in that dark place that for 3,000 years they had, there were skeletons and things. People were hiding there. And I came up with an idea that uh, since the Germans were patrolling, that their dogs could smell everybody. So when I could get hold of a boat and put people in it, I got some potato sacks, and I covered them with potato sacks so the dogs couldn't smell us. And so we managed to get several hundred people out of Paris and, and free them. But then they, they found out about me, so I had to sort of escape again. So I, I went to England, and... Uh, when I got to England, they, were, they couldn't get over. I had sari on, I had a French passport, but I, they said, you know, uh, India belongs to England. I said, not where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, I'm, but I'm here because maybe my father is with the French Canadians, so I'm going to Canada House, and I can see, see if I can see him which I actually did in the end, but only for a few moments. <laughs> okay, so I, that's a lot to unpack. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Tao was in the French resistance, uh, and, and she was helping Jewish people and others escape the Nazis. Uh, and so imagine, what were you doing in your 20s? <laughs> I think about this, and you don't know, is it 22 years old? Or, uh, and, and, and so uh, and there was a sense of fearlessness and you'll see as we go through, and how also yoga and meditation and, and, and um, come back in some interesting um, ways. And so you, you arrive in London, and the bombing is starting, and, 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 and the bombing blitz. You remember the day the bombing blitz started. I remember you describing that. Uh, and so uh, people are hiding underground, and, and you decide to do what? Um. Well, I, I didn't have any money, and uh, I'd gone to a dentist, and uh, he made me pay in advance. And when I went to, the, to have my uh, work with him, he uh, actually, um, was, the, his office was surrounded with police, and he was a, a spy. And so my money went down the drain, and I'm walking along Shaftesbury Avenue, almost laughing to myself, I had two shillings and a bar of chocolate left. And how was I going to get even my uh, clothes and my baggage out of the, out of the place where I stayed for the, for the day? Um, and as I walked along Sunday, somebody said, Hi, don't I know you? I said, I don't think so. But then I looked carefully. She, she said, well, weren't you in Calcutta three years ago? I said, yes, how do you know? She said, well, at the Oberoi, I was doing a show, 
And when I came off from the show, the Oberoi Hotel, uh, they, uh, my clothes got caught in the chair of the person around, and it was my uncle. So she said, let's go and have some tea. I said, well, I really can't because I don't really have any money. So she got me a job in a nightclub, but the first one wasn't very successful because they put me in a, in a, a sort of a chorus with lots of black beads around here, and the brassy didn't fit very well, and all the beads, the beads went all over the place. So I didn't, the job didn't last more than that night. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I started, she said, I, I saw you when you were uh, dancing in Calcutta. You were doing a lot of hand movements. You know. And she said, why don't you get a, a dress together and uh, I'll get you in there. Would you do some nightclub work? I said, yes. I'm not scared of the, uh, of the bombing. So I was eventually in uh, five, uh, five different nightclubs. And uh, one of your famous uh, uh, people who were columnists, writing a, a column for the American public called Darker London, suddenly wrote the column saying, it's no longer Darker London. There is a French girl here who's not scared of the bombing. And uh, she's in one nightclub after another where Everybody is following her because uh, she's not scared. So it was very good because at the end of the war, when I was repatriated back to to, Canada, to Paris, um, I suddenly, along the Champs Elysees, suddenly someone called my name. And I, I said, do I know you? She said, no, but we are 2,000 American wax, and we're stationed in Paris. And they're going to ship us out to go to help regiments everywhere. And uh, so uh, we need to know how to give a show because we can't afford the, all of the Bob Hope shows and everything, of which I was in one of them with Bob Hope. And um, so I, I said, well, I hear all the Americans calling the, uh, the, uh, the men... Uh, Joe, hi, hi, Joe, and they were calling all the women chicks. So I decided the only way I could teach them was to do this. I taught them, will you take this chick to be your wife? Will you take this Joe to be your man? <laughs> and now you're married, I wish you joy, a first a girl and then a boy. The, the head of the, of the American army in uh, uh, Paris said you have to take her when you leave next week we're shooting all all of the um, the regiments out to um, to Venice to uh, uh, not Venice what you call it uh, to to uh, uh, Austria pardon Austria Austria yes and uh, so I went to Salzburg with them and I taught them to put on shows for for it to save the American uh, the, the, it costs so much money to have all the big stars come in. And so uh, I was with the American troops learning English. Everything that they thought was French, they would make for me, whether it was French apple pie or something, and they were really very wonderful. So I just got mixed up with them, and they eventually went back. In France, I became well-known as a star. Uh, I was the, in my book. You'll see the dress that was made for the uh, for Prince Philip's uh, mother, for his uh, marriage to Queen Elizabeth, was made on me. It was in all of the newspapers. Um, Wait, so I'm going to stop you there because I want to show you. Um, and and so doesn't she look like a spy? Yes. <laughs> and, and so Tao is wearing the cross of Lorraine, which is a symbol for free friends. And, and, and this is Le Petit Club Francais in, in London, where a lot of the, the French uh, would meet. That's Mer uh, Burgess Meredith in the middle, and uh, Clark Gable would go there, a lot of people. Uh, and, and then Tao and your, your friends during that time were really the cultural elite, Marlena Dietrich, um, Noel Coward. 
Uh, and he was teaching you English at that time. <laughs> it, was a, it was very exciting during the Blitz. I wasn't scared of just silly, stupid, you know, nothing was strong. So they were, I, I joined General de Gaulle, and I started going back to, to France too to help um, the uh, people escape because I get on a boat, and um, a fishing boat, and, and help them get across. So it, I continued a little bit with General de Gaulle. That's why I wore, wore the Cross of Lorraine, the French uh, cross. And you used, so Tao used her theater work as cover for the French resistance work. Um, because people thought, oh, a woman, she's, you know, she's an actress, you know, um, wasn't really a threat. Um, and, and so, and she used that to, to help save people's lives. And, and so, before we get to after the war, I must show this handsome man, your husband, Yvonne, who was a French fighter pilot uh, for the Ile de France squadron. Um, it, was, it was actually the first uh, fighter pilots from France for, at the war. And uh, uh, so it was, I, they all came to see me at the nightclub. And uh, I, I introduced them everywhere. And then I looked around, and there was another young man standing there. And I said, who do you want to be introduced to? He said, I'm looking at her. And I looked around. It was only me left. <laughs> but one, uh, he was he was a wonderful pilot who went uh, a Spitfire pilot, and he when he was fighting the Germans he would be yodeling, and everybody would say there goes Papa, the, the Germans will think they're in the wrong country, <laughs> so, so he was a good pilot. The, but the Ile de France was the first pilot that all the boys that escaped were under French uh, under De Gaulle. And so I was with them a lot there. And it was a very, very famous squadron. Uh, and, and then, so now, then, you know, that's not Photoshop. <laughs> so Tao then, after the war, became a famous model. Now, it does seem ABC News called Tao the real-life Forrest Gump. So those, I don't know if those of you who watched the movie Forrest Gump, but... Um, Tao shows up in history in all of these different industries and, uh, and because of your yoga and your body awareness, um, they said that you walk like a panther. Yes, it, it, it was really quite fun, actually. I, even uh, Marlene Dietrich, whom I had started to know in, uh, in London during the Blitz, uh, she would follow, she came in with Bing Crosby from the trenches, and she was covered in um, uh, mud, and uh, uh, they were in a jeep. And so she went to Lanvin, where I was modeling too. And at Lanvin, uh, she said, "I want you to make a dress on towel. It'll be, it'll fit me." So she she was appearing at the Olympia Theater, and so she she took up her muddy pants and everything and put the dress on and that's where I learned what glamour was all about. She was an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary person. She wasn't a, a, she wasn't a show off. She was actually going in the trenches amongst the men and uh, so was Bing. He never tried to be. You know, uh, Bob Hope was, I was on his show too. But Bob Hope was always the big show and a lot of Faldera, like on the stage. But Bing wasn't, he was in the trenches with, with her. So it's interesting. I, I got to know a lot of people. And suddenly, from out of the blue, somebody said, we're sending nine models to, um, um, to America. And they want you because you've just been chosen it's the girl with the longest legs in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's all I am, I'm all legs, nothing else, really. And uh, uh, so I came to America in 1948, and um, I went all over America uh, with an NBC singer, an NBC announcer. We had two chartered planes for Lever Brothers, but they liked me, and so when they, it was finished, they asked me to come back to be a 
on a show with Ilka Chase, and it, which folded. So now I'm in America, and um, I don't have any money. So I took a Greyhound bus across uh, America, and I, I asked for a glass of wine and a, a baguette, and this, the driver said, oh, no, miss. He said, we only have hot dogs and Coca-Colas. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on the bus, so people, uh, I saw a place where I could have a, a, a wash in St. Louis. So the driver said, because um, uh, he said, leave your things here. But on the, on the, uh, the uh, bus, there were some people who wouldn't let a girl sit down, a little black girl with a baby in this arm and a child in this one, three years old. So I got really mad when I saw what happened, and I gave her my seat, and then went and, and the driver said, you better be careful, because they're not nice men. I said, well, are they going to throw me out? I'll have the French government after them. But in any case, they stole all my things. So I, was, I did the rest of the, from St. Louis to, to Hollywood in, um, on the bus, and uh, with only a couple of um, uh, dollars in my pocket. They'd taken my passport, everything. And uh, when I got there, guess what? The girl, who, one of the girls who was with me uh, in Paris and who went to Salzburg with me uh, was now a deputy sheriff. So she, she met me and uh, she was with uh, the whole sheriff's department in, uh, in Hollywood. So it was very funny. I, that's how I arrived in Amer America and in Hollywood. And, get under. and there's a lot in Cal's life that seems like it might be serendipity, but she, you would pause. Whenever there was a, a, a challenge, Cal says that she would pause and think, what would my uncle say? Um, and she would go to what she calls her inner diary which includes, you know, Gandhi. What would Gandhi do? And so there was this constant going back to that inner diary, uh, which was a pause of a meditation. And then, you know, something would happen. Uh, something would show up. Uh, and, and so, and when Tao is saying the wax, those are the women's auxiliary corps. So Tao actually was put in uniform uh, and taught 2,000 women who were in the military how to perform and, uh, for the troops. Uh, and had never done that before, but it came from her own creativity, uh, making up these shows. With and so, the women's auxiliary uh, uh, company that they were called. So Hollywood. So the, here we get back to yoga in in an in an interesting way. So you know Hollywood. You have tabloids, and this is Marilyn Monroe, and this is Tao. And, and, and the tabloid said that Tao said, French women don't have sex appeal. <laughs> and so Tao's upset about that. Marilyn calls you. Um, what does she, she say? Uh, Marilyn Monroe, knowing that I was very upset, that I, I, first of all, I didn't know what they were talking about. My English wasn't that good. And uh, so she found my, uh, my telephone number, got on the phone to me, and said, you know, don't worry. As long as they're talking about you and the news are, you're going to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> so she was very, very sweet, really and truly, and uh, nice about it. So I, I, got to, I came into Hollywood almost with a thud because two people had invited me to come to Universal and to Fox and um, 20th Century Fox. And, uh, and also, the head of, of um, MGM said, gave me his card and wanted to see me. So each time I kept telling everybody that I had a rendezvous with Mr. Saul Siegel at 20th Century Fox. In the end, he got upset. He said, would you tell that chick to stop saying that she, she has a rendezvous with me? I, they think I'm having an affair with her. <laughs> I didn't, a rendezvous. So I had a few... A, Two funny things happened to me at MGM. They tried to get rid of my French accent, and uh, they would, for instance, we were doing a show one day, and they kept saying to me, Tao, will you please turn your 
face to the camera. And please tell, will you face it? After about the third time, I got a little bit upset. How do you spell face? He said, how does anybody spell face? F-A-C-E. I said, oh, that's it. French in faces, F-E-S-S, E-S. <laughs> and I kept turning my face to the, to the camera. <laughs> but uh, then Indra Devi came there. And she said to me, what are you doing? I'd been, she was the one I marched with, with Gandhi. She said, what are you doing in, uh, in films? Why are you not teaching yoga? I said, because my yoga is not good enough. And so uh, she said, nonsense, you teach. So Catherine Grayson and, and, Penny, and De Debbie Reynolds and all of them asked me to teach some yoga. So I had been going back to India all the time, but just to do yoga for myself. And that's when I went and saw... Uh, uh, I, I, Iyengar. <laughs> uh, and uh, I said to him uh, about t taking, and she said, I don't teach women. I said, you're a snob. So he, he, t he started his, uh, all, and I was 17 years with, with him. So uh, wait, I have to stop you there. So Tao convinced Iyengar to start teaching women. Uh, and, and they're contemporary in age, so Tal just, you know, you're a snob. <laughs> uh, I can only imagine being in the room in that conversation. Uh, and, and so here are some of your masters. So while you, so Hollywood had an effect on Tal, you know, how, as things became more glamorous on the outside and, and, and the glitz and all, Tal, you became more lost, really, uh, and had to go into nature and and you found the Vedanta Society in, in, in Hollywood and really got back into your, the base of meditation. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Yes, it was, uh, it was interesting to, to do, to start doing yoga more professionally and learn more about it. And, uh, but I, so I was 17 years with him, but I still was looking for something more than that. Uh, and uh, I, I, I went to the uh, uh, Maharaja of Mysore and said, you know, I'm going to try to go to Patabha Joyce because I think he holds the key to what I feel is missing with my yoga. Nobody could b beat uh, Iyengar for uh, the way you put your feet and everything, but with Patabha Joyce, it was he was talking about the inner inner uh, energy and how to breathe properly, and uh, so I spent seven years uh, with him, and uh, he was incredible. Uh, in fact, some of you may know David Svensson, who is a very good friend of mine, uh, was with Patabha uh, Joyce, and is one of the, the best yoga teachers in the whole world. He's really extraordinary, wonderful person. So uh, I learned different styles of yoga, and I was always searching a little bit more. And what could I do to be of help? And not just sit there and say, do this posture, do that posture. I'm afraid I'm, a, I'm inclined to walk around, and I know that we all have different bodies, different styles. You can't tell everybody to do it exactly the same way. You must show them. And you must, you, you can't just sit there and say, do a posture. I go in there, and if I can help people, uh, that's my, what I want to do most in my life, is to do something worthwhile. So I have taught yoga all over the world now. In Moscow, in Dubai, 3,600 people came came from around the world to see me. I'm not anything special. I just want to do things that will help. And what I've lived through, I've had three hip replacements, and people kept telling me what I couldn't do. I said, I'm not interested in what I can't do. And I'm going to show you that nothing's impossible. And so that's what I pra try and practice, what I preach. I go in and try to do 
what I can do to help other people in a, that's what yoga is all about, the union of life. And so I hope that somehow it does some good in, in my work. Well, I, I put this up here. I'm going to go back, though, for a moment, because also uh, the Maharishi yes. uh, came to see you. Yes. Uh, and he sought you out before people really knew, you know, I, about you know, him. I, when I was in Hollywood one day, the, uh, the gentleman in my building came to me. He said, I don't know what it is. I was in San Francisco, and I met the most incredible Indian man. And it's so incredible. And uh, he said that in my building was somebody he was going to meet. And uh, he said, well, did he give you a name? He said, no, he didn't know the name of the person. Uh, so uh, about, he said, the only person I can think, it must be you, because you're the one that's traveled so much. So we're walking along, and suddenly from behind me, I hear a big laughter. Oh, you found her. You found her. It was Maharishi. And uh, when I, I turned around, I never met him. He'd never met me. And eventually, we did a lot of things in, uh, uh, in Hollywood. Also, in, uh, when I went back to France, he would come and call me up from England. I'm sending someone to meet you, Tahu. He's somebody very important. They're looking for a place for me to make an ashram. And I'm coming to Paris. I want you to set up something for me. I said, okay, I will try. But it's not quite the same as Hollywood. And when he got there, he, had, uh, they, he was with a crowd of people and uh, from England. And so they left him. He didn't know where he was going. He had to go on a train. And I, I was so worried about him. No food, and he's giving all his money away. So I, I, uh, I standing there wondering what to do. And I, uh, the man who ran the, the sleeping cars on the train to, uh, uh, to uh, the frontier, uh, he came up. He said, Mademoiselle, sit in old sacre I said, yes. He said, I will stay with him until he finds his people. So my is said to me, you see, Tao, there's always a way. Always. Never give up on anything. Just know. And uh, so he, uh, he used to call me up from everywhere. He was telling me what he was doing or whether a new person was going through Paris. Now must, they must meet me. And uh, I said, well, you know, I really don't have anything much to give. I'm not that spiritual. I'm still trying to learn. And he said, you're more spiritual than me, Tao. Go and do it for me. So it was a lot of fun. And isn't that the, the topic of, of this is the, really the spiritual side of being. And, and, and we, we call Tao's autobiography Dancing Light. Uh, the spiritual side of being through the eyes of a modern yoga master because her journey, you know, she lived fully, so fully and lives so fully in the world, um, and in Hollywood and the fashion and all these different things. And, and, and it was a dance. It was a dance of coming back to meditation and, and going out and coming back. And, um, and, and that's, you know, the dance of life Tao often talks about. Uh, and so I'm going to fast forward a lot because there's a lot more in between there, but I want to get more into the yoga. So there's wine in there. I'll skip over for a moment. This towel is in her 80s at this point. Look at the height of that peacock. Uh, and, and so you, you, were, you know, started to do retreats around the world. You mentioned yoga for peace in Israel uh, in the 90s. So you became this ambassador for yoga. And so I want to, for a moment, though, talk about dance, because when you were 80, in your 80s, 87, you decided to take up competitive ballroom dancing. So talk about that, as well as the, the connection between yoga and dance. Well, actually, what happened was I was doing a teacher's training program of yoga, and it was snowing like mad, so my students didn't turn up. And... Uh, and uh, I was hiring 
uh, the room at the Fred Astaire studio, ballroom dancing, and their students didn't turn up either. So they asked me, uh, Tao, uh, do you dance? And I said, well, little. The Americans taught me how to jitterbug during the war. And, but I want to go to Argentina to dance the tango before I die. So they said, why don't you start tonight? And I, I did. I started, and since then, I've won 748 first places in the forum dancing. I have to update that. <laughs> you just, he just won a slew of new awards a week ago. And so, and, and Tao will do, what are the dances you do? Tango. I, I did 33 dances. 33. Mamba, Ramba, Samba, Waltz, Viennese Waltz, Foxtrot, Quick Step, Jitterbug, Swing, uh, uh, Bolero, uh, Casa Doble, and uh, I just did one of your famous songs. You remember the thing? Uh, pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? I did that with this young man from uh, Russia, and we we got a, a, a an award for it. It was a very, it was a lot of fun. I I love to dance. Dancing is an expression also of the soul. It's the outward possession of what is inside of you. Your breath of life is the dance of life, and the, uh, the dance of our inner self. Whenever I'm teaching my class, I actually let them lie on their stomach, and if you want to try it, it works. You lie, and at the beginning, you'll only faintly hear your breath beating within you. But as you do some more, it gets stronger and stronger. I would decided a long time ago that I didn't want to pray to something out into space. I wanted to pray to that which was already beating in my own heart, that it was there, and that when it stopped beating, I would just go back to the earth. So I believe in that, I, and I feel that it's helped me through many uh, problems, and at the same time, it's helped all my students. In fact, I've just received a lovely letter from somebody in um, uh, uh, Baltimore, a young man who doctors gave him all sorts of pills and everything, and he's in pain and everything. So I talked to him and worked on him, and um, uh, even had him next to the wall with his feet on the wall. Because what I've done myself is when I have problems with my legs, you know, um, I, uh, uh, from all of these uh, back problems, uh, I made my, my bed higher and put all the junk underneath it. And then when I got problems in my ankles here, Try it, it works. I put my uh, feet on the bed up high and I do a, a semi shoulder stand. And within five minutes, it's gone. Now, you may laugh at this, but when uh, uh, John, um, what was his name? John Wayne. John Wayne. When John Wayne, the, I called him a cool boy because that's when I was in Hollywood. I wanted to be a cool girl. And they asked me what a cool girl was. But that's another story. <laughs> and uh, actually, I even had a, the horse. I did get to ride a horse. And you did I'll yoga you. with the horse. Yes. So in any case, you, when he died, he found out that uh, oh, uh, 100 pounds extra were hard veins that had gone in almost like cement. So I thought, well, maybe that's a publicity thing. But the, uh, I went, to, I, about a few days later, I got another call from Wales in England. And um, I went over there that somebody had been three weeks in a coma. She wasn't dying. They'd been feeding her. But uh, she was in this coma. And uh, so when I went over there, I noticed that she had huge 
blocks in our veins. They were like big uh, balls in her long her legs. And I started to work on her feet. And in less than three days, she was she came to and recognized her her husband. And the hospital and the doctor said, What did you give her? I said, I didn't give her anything. I just massaged the inner feet and worked on her feet. And that uh, that sort of moved the sol everything that had gone solid in the veins. It moved the veins. And this is if when we realize that the bloodstream has to go through the vortexes in the chakras, and a lot of you know what the chakras are. The chakras are vortexes of energy, and they, uh, the Chinese call it, the, uh, the uh, ancient Chinese said that from the inside of your feet, that the animal, you, the, that you must channel the energy up through the inside, that you should never have your feet going out like this. Now, you can laugh at me because I wear high heels. I even climb Machu Picchu and Darjeeling in high heels. But I keep my instep higher, and I work on my in, the inside of my feet. And I prevented some people who were going to have big operations that never worked out well, and from having them. So it's a, and this is still yoga. The watching where the blood travels through your veins, and how does it do it? That you go back to breathing. You're moving the energy from the inside. So one of my best friends, uh, an Indian boy, he was going to do the um, the big um, r r ride through the New York Marathon. Yes, in uh, New York, and um, he was in tears because he'd raised $28,000 for the poor and he was going to have to give it back. And I said, no, let me see what's happening. I looked at his feet and I started to work on his feet and I started making him uh, with his sneakers to have on the outside of the sneaker, I mean inside the shoe, but on the outside part to have it raised up, and he came in third. So he, uh, he, he uh, it's been helping a lot of people working on the feet. Now you, okay, so since you're on this, this is one of how people, people always ask, what are the secrets? Uh, and, and there are so certain things you do do every day, and, and you talk about the power of hands and feet, and the connection with longevity and the brain. Uh, and you massage your hands and feet in a certain way. Just talk about that for a moment. That, well, that is exactly what I did with this this uh, person in England. I worked on her feet. I worked also on a very famous uh, yoga teacher, Rini Diamond, uh, who was with me yesterday at the uh, UN. Uh, we were at the UN yesterday talking about yoga, trying to get yoga into the world and everything. And so uh, she was with me, but she was, when I met her, she was going to have an operation. And I said, before you do, can I show you something? Work on your feet with this. And she went 15 years without having an operation. Then she got to a place where she was using, uh, the people were using their feet on this way instead of like uh, Iyengar, keeping your feet this way in alignment here, not, not all the way out. And uh, within less than a few weeks, she was back having pains in her hips and her knees. So if you can work on your hands, the same thing. I, this one I broke. I fractured it, was all hanging out. Um, I managed to get it back working pretty well, and then some Russian people came to on the TV and, and kept saying, hold that, like you saw me up there, uh, hold that posture, hold the posture, and it broke again, it cracked. So I work on my hands too, 
and on my fingers. And now I can lift off the ground, even on my hands again. I've, 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 so you see, it's not gone out the side. It's with me. And you can do it. There are so many little tricks in life that make us use the beauty of our bloodstream and the beauty if we use our breath. You can learn them to use them. And how do you think I got to 98? I said 98 because I won't give in on anything. And when people talk about getting old, I don't believe in it. Just look outside at the trees. There are hundreds, some thousands of years old, and they're not dying. Even after a terrible winter, like we had a bad winter up into May, the trees had no branches filled with leaves, no, nothing to grow. And then suddenly, they started up again. And this has been one of the most beautiful uh, summers we've had in the trees. Those trees are hundreds of years old, thousands of years old. And they're working on the, on the um, uh, inside, of what you call that, just the sperm of the inside the trunk. The, the sap? The sap, yes, sorry. Sometimes my English slips away, so I have to find it back again. A, the, uh, the sap of the tree, that's why the American Indians used to put their arm around the trunk and listen to the energy of the tree moving in. So I happened to tell this to, to Robert, who did the red, the photograph of me in the red. And uh, he, I, I was with a, a tango dress, and I put my hand on the, on the tree like this, on the trunk of a very old tree. And within a few moments, the tree had lifted me that much off the ground. Just he was like levitating. This, the energy in the trees is the same energy that's in us. It's the chakras in the trees. It's moving up like this. It's in all of us. But 90% of us don't use it. You can't take a breath this way and sniff. That won't do any good. But if you feel that movement coming up and opening up the, the gateway to your heart, you will get through everything. I just I went with uh, Terry to Dubai, uh, Dubai. and the, just before I w was in helping some students, and it was very cold in the studio, and I went to put a heater on and got caught up in it. And so I was packing the next day and went to Dubai, and I, I couldn't walk. I was having trouble. But I couldn't let them down because they'd done so much. So I, I taught them they're not so much standing, but sitting all the yoga postures. And 3,600, not one of them left. All of them stayed there and came to it. There's nothing you can't do. Just know that when you get up in the morning, whatever you put in your mind materializes. If you're doing worried about something, your mind gets in the way. It, it, it. But if you say to yourself, this is going to be the best day of my life, it is. It, it works out that way. You can laugh at me, but it's true. In Jamaica, they're chanting now, this is going to be the best day of our lives. Don't put in your mind anything that's negative. It, that will materialize too. Never say, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. One minute after midnight, it's already today. Don't procrastinate. Know that nothing is impossible when you're in touch with that inner power. It's in us all. It goes to sleep if we don't use it, so it's no use. But if you're in touch with it and you're tuning in, it's as good as a lot of medicine, quite frankly. That's, that's how I get back. And nobody can stop me from doing what I want to do. And I have to tell you something. I have a friend in India, and um, he uh, has a, a camel cart and takes you out into the desert and uh, under tents and everything. has a beautiful smile. And I said to him, you know, you remind me 
of, um, of this uh, the Maharaja of Jodhpur. He said, oh, that's my cousin. Well, we got talking, and he decided that when I hit 100, he was going to have 100 elephants, 100 uh, camels, and I could invite 100 people. So when we're, I'm, I'm going to make 100 so that I can, <laughs> I can ride a camel. We're planning that party. <laughs> Just tune in. Tune in to your... It's not tuning into your inner self. It doesn't take the smile off your face. It actually makes you glow. Every pore in your body glows. Every time you take a breath and you follow it, you're tuning in to what is in everything. Now, I teach sometimes at Kripalu. And one day when I got there, I saw seven men, and they were banging at something on the floor. And I said, what are you doing? He said, there's a bug, there's a bug. I said, so what? We're going to kill it. I said, you're not killing it in my class. This is what you mean. I said, that little bug, there are seven of you all doing this, and that tiny little bug, whose heart's beating too, is able to uh, uh, miss you. So I made them take it outside. And <laughs> they didn't kill it. I don't want to kill anything. I'm in touch. My biggest thing is save the elephants, save every animal, save the wolves. I, I'm, I'd rather have that than eat. And I don't eat very much. I want to, I want to help nature and feel that they all have that same energy as I have. And going right back to when I was a little girl, I had my ear one day to, to the grass. And I, my aunt asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm listening to the grass grow. And she went and told my uncle, and he said, she's not silly. She's, uh, that blade of grass had to have a, a heart, a power within it to push through the soil. Every single thing on this earth is in us. The energy is here. And it sounds crazy, but maybe I am a little. But you know something? I love nature, and I love the wonder of life. And I love everyone I knew in this room because you have the beauty of a smile on your face, and I can feel all of your energy within me. And this is why I always have when you come to my house, Ganesh. You saw Ganesh. He rather has a big fat tummy. And he always had an elephant with a big smile on his face sitting there. And the reason is that he's welcoming you into my, uh, my room and into my heart. And this is in, and the fat tummy is filled with all the things he can give you if you're waiting to do the, one, the things you want to do in your life. In, in your life. So some, some of the doors in India have, the, have a Ganesh there. But if you come to my house, you'll see him, and he will welcome you there in, into my heart. And uh, my, heart, my place looks a little bit like a museum because all the people I've loved in my life, I, I can't get away. I can't throw the photos out or anything. Well, they're so, historic. Tao has this Gandhi... Um, image uh, that was given an etching that was given to her when she was a girl, and it made it from India to Europe to you know, America. Well, with me. And that necklace Tao has on is over a hundred years old uh, because it was given to her when she was a girl. Um, and so, Tao, I want to have some time for questions, but I want to. So, you taught at the Pentagon, you know. Um, 90 Department of Defense personnel, you've been covered by media all over the world. Uh, you're still a fashionista. <laughs> uh, and, and so this is probably my favorite picture of you and your, your statement that in my head, I'm still in my 20s and I don't have an, any intention of ever growing up. And so uh, before we open for questions, is that the secret? Everyone's asking, well, what's the secret? You're 98 years old. You're traveling the world. Your te Tao teaches at least eight classes, yoga classes a week, and then special workshops and dance lessons. She's always preparing for the next dance competition. 
what, what do you say to that when people ask, well, what's the secret? I, I think nothing's impossible. <laughs> if you're tuning in to the breath of life, you're tuning in to that which is behind everything in this universe. And uh, I have a cute story for you. I have, do sometimes some work with some children. Some of them do Kung Fu and everything, but then they come and do some yoga with me. So we, at the end, they sit on the floor, and I sit on the floor with them. They're usually three years old to six years old, and six years old to uh, 12. So I sit on the floor, and they ask me questions. And uh, uh, when I, I was talking about, there was a big thing about schools and fighting and everything. And th this is what I got from a little nine-year-old. Tao. I agree with you completely. We have to feel this oneness. When we get to in school, we shouldn't go in wait, waiting to fight with our friends. We should go in loving our friends. So I, I, his mother tried to pull him away from me. He came around the back to try and finish. So apparently in, in school, he's got everyone in school, when he arrives there every morning, that they sit and smell at each other and hug each other, and <laughs> nine years old. But another little girl is six, and she asked me, Tao, what are you going to do when you retire? <laughs> I said, I'm not going to retire. She said, oh, goody, but what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to dance my way to the next planet. She said, well, you know, that makes sense. We put a man on the moon, and we're putting a, a man on stars and everything, and by the time it gets to be your age, I'll be able to find you again. Nine years old. So children are wonderful. And if we can get them to feel that feeling, not to go along like this. I asked a little boy the other day, he's all hunched up, a, a question. And what he said, And about five minutes later, I asked him the same question. I said, what, what do you mean there? Well, it's, it's in there. I said, you mean to say that that fool knows more than you do? And suddenly he looked at me. He walked away and didn't look back at his at the, the thing at all. But he was bent over like this. And this is no good. We are getting to be hunchback, and it's not helping any of them. And I know it's nice to know all the things that happen in life, but I think we have to think a little bit more of um, learning to try and tell children. Children are smart. They can do a lot. They can make you feel good, too. But if they're, uh, they're getting into things where they're angry all the day or fighting or violence, they're not going to go anywhere in their life. So I want to see it, and that's why we're moving in with the UN, and uh, with Terry and I. And uh, we, we're going in. 36 countries are starting yoga. And uh, uh, the reason is, why aren't they doing something with football and baseball and all these things? The reason is really and truly that all of that is somebody loses. One wins, but someone loses. When you do yoga, we all win. It's in all of us, and we're all together, and it can open up, and we'll have a better idea of life and what we stand for. I know it sounds crazy, but that I believe. It's crazy good. <laughs> and Tao says, if we can breathe together, we can be together. Uh, and, it, and isn't that it? And, and at the UN, that was you know, part of the message. And the Indian ambassador said, Tao brought heart to the UN chambers and changed the energy in the chambers. Now, a lot of the ambassadors normally use prepared remarks. You know, They just get up and they start talking, and they're not really looking at you or anything. And, and they put the remarks down, uh, and they actually shared stories from the heart. Uh, and so it was very different. 
event, and, and, and that was you uh, for the International Day of Yoga. So, Tal, I want to have some time for questions, so I want to thank you. Join me in thanking Tal. <laughs> I really didn't want to bore you with all my my ideas. I didn't, I don't mean to bore you with my ideas, frankly, uh, but I practice them more and more, and so I I've learned to do things and and rid my mind of what everybody says just because they that's this and that. Uh, there's one remark that was made by Vivekananda that. Uh, all, if you want to go to the top of the mountain, you don't have to change your religion or the way you think. All paths will lead you to the top of the mountain. For truth is one, and sages call it by many names. So that, I believe, is the way I think. That's it. Thank you. So this is a wonderful opportunity to tap into almost a century of wisdom. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, there's a mic right up here. Uh, and um, raise your hand. Come on up. Thank you so much for being here. I feel unbelievably honored. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing more images of who's who in the spiritual world with women like you. I'm tired of seeing all the men all the time. So uh, I'd <laughs> love to see more women uh, representing the spiritual world. Yeah. I'm going Wait, to I'm go... I'm going to pause for a second because Tao had a car accident, so I'm going to repeat for a yeah. moment. So the comment was um, that, first, thank you, and, and he's tired of seeing so many men up there. Thank you for having a female master here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be certified this summer to teach yoga, and I'd like some advice from you on what makes a good yoga instructor. Ah, what makes a, uh, he will be certified as a yoga teacher this summer. What makes a good yoga teacher? What makes a good teacher? Uh, don't try and teach every, everybody exactly the same way. Don't sit there and have people side by side where they bump into each other. To, to go and, to, and let them know that there's nothing you can't do. It might take a little time, but you're on the right path. It, I know from people who come in, sometimes they look at me afraid. I, I've never done yoga. I'm, I don't really want to do, but my wife makes me or something. But you know <laughs> something? I make them feel happy. I, I start off always with uh, tuning in uh, throughout. And I, and I work with it. And I think we need people like you that are even thinking about what should we do. Because I believe you're, we're blessed with people like you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions? Come, come on up. I'm sorry if I... I'm awfully sorry. I really I got hit by a car, and, and they've had a hearing aid, and all I could hear was my own self eating. <laughs> <laughs> and and tell, tell, people often ask, before you ask your question, people ask, you know, does Tal, Tal doesn't get sick. Tal has only had different falls and accidents, and it's very interesting. And then she heals herself after that. Uh, so, first of all, I'll also say thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, a big part of yoga is, is thinking of yoga as a whole, is uh, meditation. Uh, so I wanted to ask if you could tell us a little bit about your journey specifically with meditation and, and maybe even some tips as to, uh, how to how to make that practice more beneficial. So, your a question you often get, meditation. Uh, and, you know, what's your practice? How to um, make his practice more... Well, I, I don't take it the wrong way. I don't think you can meditate if you're all like this. I think you can meditate if you're in touch. In touch with your breath, you're in touch with the, 
your inner self, you're in touch with the Lord of creation inside of you. And you're nearer to God than any other time. So when you're doing meditation, don't sink down and block your, your heart center. See, look. When, if I take a breath here and do, do this, I can't meditate. Even if my head is down like that, I'm squashing everything. If I want to meditate, I want to open my heart to everything. And I want to feel that my whole heart is going to take me on this road of life that's going to show me the way. Meditation is not looking downwards and all hunched up. Meditation is when you open up inside of you and you're in tune with something that is behind all things in the world. It's in seeing the plants, seeing springtime, seeing how suddenly energy moves through in springtime and the weather. Look at it. Look at that incredible moon in the sky. There's so much beauty in the world. Meditation will come to you, but don't, don't squash yourself. Don't, don't think that this is, is possible. The joy of, of a smile on someone's face is true meditation. They're really in, in touch with their inner self. And, and look, hasn't he got a lovely smile? <laughs> You see, no, it's infection. It's infection, really. Make people smile with you. Uh, don't don't come in like this with all the things that can go wrong. You're making them go wrong. Inside of me is the answer all the time to what's going to happen. And I don't face the day thinking about what can happen that won't work. I face knowing that if I'm in charge of this, it will open the door of life to something. And you'd be surprised how many people that I get received calls from, from Mo Mongolia, from Papa. And I wonder how the Dickens, they know me at all. And it's only because of some of the silly ideas I have that I practice every day. So I know that you will be a wonderful teacher your teacher, aren't you? Uh, not formally, but yes. This is this is what brings joy into other people's lives, and you you do a great job, really. So it's true. I, think, I hope. Thank you so much. And and also, Tao has often said when people ask about meditation, you say your life is your meditation. So instead of sitting at certain times, it's, it's every day. And I get in our current language, we call that mindfulness. But you're a study in mindfulness. What, what's the, your, your next question? Come. Thank you for sharing your inspirational life. Could you share with us also what your daily practice is and some of your favorite yoga poses? Your daily practice some, and also some of your favorite yoga poses. Like, what do you do daily in terms of yoga? I like shoulder stand. I like to, ups, to take the, and I'll tell you why. And another good thing for you yourselves, every night, do you realize how long, all day long, that the bloodstream is going down this way? And this is why you get these cramps in your legs and everything. Uh, do the upside. Even go to the wall and to get close to the wall, and put your feet on the wall a little bit higher, and then lift up. You don't have to do a shoulder stand, of which I love to do. I could do one almost tucking it in. <laughs> she would. <laughs> but um, when you get the bloodstream to go back to your, the brain, you'll find that you will get rid of terrible pains if you had a, I've had pains from the hip replacement. In my legs, are tra bad cramps. I get rid of it. It's how when I massage my feet that I told you with, and my, the person in Wales, when I massage her feet, 
right away she came to. So this is it. the energies in us to, to re recycle ourselves. Start off by recycling. Know every morning that you can do something just like, the, like nature does. Nature is a, a way of showing us the path. It, in a way, it's the best time uh, to, um, uh, to learn to meditate. I, I watched all of the, um, the, the beautiful geese and everything in the sky and, the, and all the animals, and I learned so much from them. They were put on this earth to help us, and we should try. And, and, and some of Tao's signatures, as you see, is this, uh, the shoulder stand, and then over the years has been her peacock. <laughs> uh, and, years ago. and your raised lotus. You're always in, she's always in lotus for hours. Uh, and so next, next question. Any other question? Yeah, I probably scared you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no. So I've enjoyed a couple of your workshops in New York. They're wonderful. And I just wonder if you can be a little more specific about that massaging the hands and feet and how you do it. Yes. That, so everyone is curious. And we're actually going to be doing video, and we're going to be showing it in, a, in the next book, her techniques. Because that, so let me put this so you can make it. So you might do this now as she's doing it. So right now, she's stretching her fingers first. My hands are working. Sorry. No, no, I'll hold it. You can do it. So you, you, can, you can take one, but never just take it like this. Take it where you, your this uh, uh, the joint. part is so that you, you can really work. When I'm doing things on the floor, <laughs> <Down goes. laughs> see this way. No, not this way. Would that's making me down. This way. So, so, so Tao does her uh, downward dog and all on her fingertips, which is highly unusual. Put, put energy in there, and you feel the energy there. Then, if you put your elbows inside your ribs, not there. Not here, because that slips off. But right underneath the ribs there, right there, then it, it helps me. Then I can bring my legs up in the air. Now, can I ask you a question since we're doing this? So um, you often uh, surprise people when we're doing a tree. Uh, and because of the Vishnu foot. Uh, so just talk about that just for a moment. Even seasoned yogis look at Tao and like, what? You know, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I went to the Indian concert and I said to them about um, the, the the photograph that they were uh, sending out to to bring people to India, and a girl with her knee down like that, um, down this way down here, like this. Well, I've never, never seen a tree like that. The branches of the trees are always moving upwards. And they, so now they said, well, in America, it's for American public. I said, that's not right. In India, we take it up here. Oh, see if I get, get it here. It's a bit the foot, here. the ball of the foot is pressing yes. down and pressing this, in. This one, this one, when it's down, like, is a weeping willow. <laughs> you can stretch up to the ceiling. And the energy is riding right up to the ceiling, slipping on my dress. <laughs> but it's true. So whatever, you may always make the energy rise up like that. Don't rise here. Look, that's wasted energy. It's going out through here. And actually, you know, even sneakers, after I told this boy, and I kept telling people, sneakers that are flat going out this way is way making people walk this way. Walking behind somebody. It's <laughs> <laughs> if you're walking in front of you, you're almost lifting off the ground. You know, so we feel that, that you can do something 
that the energy is inside of you. You have to awaken it. And you mustn't, your heart is not down here. So don't let your, if you're doing it, don't let anybody do a, a breath like this. I ask them, take a breath. And you, you're not taking a breath, you're, you're, you're actually locking everything in. Take a breath and feel you open the door to your heart. And it's all of that's coming up, it's opening up the door. So nothing's impossible. I want to get my hands up there, I can get them up. And I have, this foot is a little bit, because of everything, two inches shorter than this one. But I'm not going to give in with it, not letting it get the better of me. I'm going to just bring it up there. And then the energy will travel with me. And you will, you will find that you don't get tired as much either. My people in my class, they come and say, um, well, I don't do yoga. I'm not sure I'm going to like it. And, but we, we have a lot of fun. I want them to go out smiling. I want them to know that nothing's impossible. There is nothing we can't do. Just tune into your inner self and you'll open the door of life. It works. It works. My, the other thing, too, is when you're working here, I don't hear it. This, this is not very good. Nothing is happening there. But when I'm here like this and I'm moving in here, the energy is rising up and it's coming up here. So I always go to every doing, and I have a silly way. You think you're standing straight when you do this? No, this is not, that's not good. You want to go? Go into your fingernails. See, this is nothing, hands out like that. In fact, it's heavy on my neck and my, my mind. But out here, right out there, just think of how long can I make my fingernails? And you'll see that actually you're, you're learning to open up your own heart. And so I don't stay very long, I get up. I, I don't, I do yoga, I teach three classes of yoga on a Sunday. And every Monday I do a class of yoga. And I never do one hour classes very much I, because I don't think it's enough. But I do that after that, then I go and dance for two hours, then I go back and give, give some more classes until 7.30 at night. So, um, and I don't get tired. So everything in my body is energized. And so even at this, maybe I wiggle about in, with them, but I'm learning to use both, both sides of me, evenly to make energy travel through my body. It doesn't travel through them like this. It doesn't travel through them like this. It travels through because I can feel that energy rising like a volcano inside of me and open up. I sound silly, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it works, you know. It's worked, it's got me through everything all the breaking things I managed to cure. So if you want to cure it, take your fingers and, and put some in, and, and that will help you. <laughs> Thank you, Tal. <laughs> so I know we're almost out of time. We'll take, yeah, come up. Wow. I, it's such an honor. Thank, thank, you're more of an honor than I thought this whole place this whole weekend was, it, it's so great. And you just said something that, that made me have to ask you this. My girlfriend is in uh, Chinese medicine, she's an acupuncturist, and she got a hip operation. She had a hip replacement in December. Um, and she just found out seven months later that the doctor had removed nine millimeters extra from her femur, and she's been having back problems she didn't know. Um, is there some advice that you would give her? I'm not, I, I think I know. She's having trouble with her back. Then back. Yes. No. Because her leg is shorter. Her one leg is shorter. I, I, I take it off again. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up. 
So I've written a lot of things how the beauty of hands and feet are so important. And if you can get that, let's show her that you, you're doing it. Made around and up. Around and up. Around and up. You. So this is your yeah. Yes, that's it. And you're working on that. That is the, the energy that the Chinese call channeling the energy from the inside of the world, not the outside. The outside doesn't do it, but here it does. So it's right in there, and come around like this, and uh, you, and any of you can come, and then you'll be surprised. You can hear my ears click. And I had a class the other day, with 56 people in it, and all but three were, had ticking going on. They could hear my ears clicking when I worked on it. And all of them at the end said to me, I feel so good now. It does, it wakens you up, makes you know nothing's impossible. So Tao can hear if something is hurting and her, he her ears click. Uh, and, and, and so she will know what's hurting um, by the clicking in her ears. Uh, and then the massaging, that's something every single day, when you look at what are the secrets, I look at, okay, what does Tao do every day? <laughs> there's a half a grapefruit in the morning, and there's the massaging of the feet and the legs, and a lot of it has to do with circulation, uh, as well as, again, what you put in your mind. So it's the mind, body, and, and Tao is our example. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do this. You know, you can fruit and vegetables. The verb is to be able. That's, don't, don't say I can't do anything. Just say, I'm able, because then you'll do it. I mean, you know, the same thing. I can get my, but if you, you can do it. <laughs> Here's your photo. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna move aside. <laughs> <laughs> we're in this world, there's a way for everything. There's nothing we can't do. It's a bit uh, wobbly because I'm in a dress. <laughs> May I help you up? So, so I know we're past our time, but um, thank you so very much. This is the incredible towel. This is what 98 looks like. <laughs> and she doesn't want help up. 